there was a tower of, of staging came right down to the front of the church. That way it gave us access multi-level so we could work on, as you can see there, three or four different things at, or two or three different things at once. It was great to work up there. The first couple of days you work there, you think it's going to take you forever to get there, then it's, you know, <laughs> but you don't want to forget something. And One of the 104 steps that takes yeah. you to the top. It really is broken down into several sections. That lower section where John was standing, below that level of staging. Then the next section would be the bell section where the actual bell was cradled and rang. That's why the louvered door is in the center there. And then, and that's quite a large section, above that next level of staging is where the actual uh, clock base begins. Yeah, they're typical of what was what was uncovered once we got in, took some of the uh, climbing off. Some of the, the post was bad. You can see there where the old flashing had been, maybe two people ahead of us. It could have been a century ago. It was taken out, and, we, and, and now you can see the, the tin flashing there, and, and the board that's covering had that little lift in the back. Initially, that was just the that was the roof, that, that board it had no tin on it or anything at one point. And here's the corner of that same piece, and you can see where there was a narrow strip of flashing at one point. The little rows of nail holes, nailed on the very hip, and the rest of it was just painted. This is how it deteriorated the old tin roofing had become. Tin roofing is actually steel covered with tin, but over the years the tin erodes and leaves you with rusted steel. Until they slathered the tar on it. Right. They, they coat the steel with tin because tin is indigenous to solder. There's, there's more damage. You can see there was somebody in one area had, had put steel bracing through the tower, which really is the, the structural nuts and bolts of it now. Somebody, somebody put a, a clamp and sisted up a cradle that particular timber. Yeah, there's my, there's my son-in-law working on the inside doing something. At that point, I believe that the two sections were engaged. See the lead coated cop on the bottom comes up, and then you, you see the rusty metal yeah, up at the bottom. Yeah, Right about where his knee is. Yeah, underneath the, the coil, yeah. We, we had engaged those two at that time, and, and after that picture, we, we, we recoded all the old uh, tin roof with a... With a uh, uh, zinc chromate primer and a sealer. And they're, they're, they're the gentleman uh, doing the uh, lead coat of copper, Dave Mason. He's, he's actually soldering. Solder, he's actually soldering the, the, uh, one of the corners. That lead coated no. copper comes in square sheets and they're crimped together at the edges and then he solders them. It's like a stovepipe seam, so to speak, for lack of a better. And then they solder it. The original tower had, uh, this, is, this would be the level with the uh, bell in it. Originally that was from one side to the other right up and across and down and that had deteriorated because what you're seeing there that's new is exposed to the weather. So we cut back in, took the old tin out and the lead coated copper was incorporated with it. You can see in that picture. There. Yeah, we, we, we uh, incorporated it with the old and uh, sealed it up and resealed all the old stuff less dependency on it being way inside the tower. Where you see the woodworking that comes down is cut away, right? just cutting away yeah. rot. So we cut back up to what was good and we put in red cedar versus there was an eastern pine initially. We refastened all that was there that we didn't replace, we refastened everything to make sure everything was as tight and as uh, you know, firm as we could make it. You figure every time you get a hurricane or, or, or a harsh winter storm, a certain amount of salt gets on the iron fasteners. And then every time they get damp, the salt eats it, and dries out, eats it, dries out. So a lot of the, the old structures, the fasteners are gone. Sometimes but more so than just than the wood. I mean, that was the time to do something. You waited another five or six years, it would have been you know, considerably more. Mm -hmm. you know, clock faces were in quite disrepair, especially once you got up close. Numerals were falling off, literally. Right. We're losing time. <laughs> so we had, we had to do something, you know? Dropping minutes. <laughs> the clock face picture you saw was half of it. That's That was the process. We uh, cut them out of large sheets of ply, uh, marine ply, and they were epoxied. And then from that layer, we put on two more layers for oh. to create the actual molding around the outside of it. The, what you see yeah, in black. Were, they were made out of mahogany. We made those up and put them on. And they're the painters epoxying 
the face. So it's completely sealed as best we could. Several times, you know. Yeah, John C. was very, very much on top of that and trying to give us the, you know, the best thing possible. And that's the double layer ring on top of the clock face proper. It's all been primed now. It's been sealed many times and now it's primed. And from this point, he surrounded the whole, all four sides with uh, tarps and sprayed on the, the final finish. Yeah. And those are the minutes and hour markers for the clocks. So the longer ones are about three inches long and the shorter ones are two inches long. There they are being put on. And that's, yeah, I'm, I'm working up to nine o'clock now. Oh, there's the completed face. It looked great with that high gloss. That's the mechanism that connects the actual timekeeping works down two stories all the way up to the clock faces and when it, where you see that green plate it comes a differential through. or something yeah. yeah and then there are four axes that come off of it to each to service each clock face one shaft runs them all simultaneously so there's no arguments about what time it is whether no. you're east west north or south and that's the little room where the clock works are. Just above the ceiling of the church, below the base of the tower. It's funny, you know, the clock faces are six foot diameter each. And yet there's this machinery down below that's seemingly insignificant. Mm -hmm. It's not very impressive except for the machining of it. Yeah. That's a very heavy bell. And you, t uh, t 24 times a day, start swinging it and any wood structure will take it, it'll take its toll on that. So they went from a swinging bell to that, which is a mechanized hammer that comes down. Right. Now they have that, and they also put a, a string to the clapper, right? Right, from below. So I, I think perhaps they have two ways of ringing it, but mm -hmm. they can't get that rolling. You get that much weight up there in an old structure, swinging back and forth, you end up in the pew. Doesn't work for Quasimodo. We're all done. We, we stripped the roof, ply scored it. Part of the roof was tin. The front of, of the main church was tin towards the tower and shingles in the back. I remember there was only so much tin roof on there and the rest was ended. Do you think that all of it was tin and it failed at one I don't time? know. I've got some pictures from 1912 and it shows half and half on the roof. Huh. That's underneath the, the roof proper. That's, that's the, the uh, truss system as you look down. Oh, shoot. From toward, front to back. Yeah, I don't know which direction that is. East? East. Yeah. Eastward to the end of the church, yeah. And that that's, holds up the ceiling of the church. The, 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 uh, I think it's like a king post type of truss. Hmm. And it's actually, the ceiling hangs off of them. 40 feet or something. I, I don't But it's, it's unsupported. Yeah, it's, it's a clear From span. From below, it's a clear space. Yeah. All the fasteners were all uh, stainless. Right. They were all bunged. And this is the base of the it's the base right against the roof. And you can see at one point where I believe those those, just ver those are vertical boards underneath that plywood. And they were just painted. That was it. That was it. Then along the way, somebody clapboarded it. Clapboarded the back. So we refastened everything, skinned it to, to true it up with the plywood, and re clapboarded it. And that also gave us the sense that some cases there was very little or any flashing between the between the tower and the roof. So we were able to reflash the whole thing with copper and make it you know, as watertight as possible. There they are resetting the, the new the new one. top after the fire, early 70s. And those black clock faces, as you see them there, are what we replaced. And those are six foot right. diameter. We're guessing that was just a, the game plan for re putting the new steel in for st structurally firming up the tower after the fire in 71. That one there looked like a blank wall. It doesn't show it well, but there's a lot of graffiti on there. A lot. Everybody that ever went up there was got their name in it. Connection. Connection. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have ancestral roots starting back 350 years. It's a connection with that type of work. Hank and I and Gail and all of us, when you're working on something that somebody worked on 100 years ago, that there is a, what do you say, Hank? You're more eloquent than I am. It's just like you said, a connection. It is. Um, and to think that, well, you, you're just another cog in the wheel of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? The more things change, the more they stay the same. And you sit there and have your sandwich and your lunch pail like 
the builders of that church did. So I'm looking forward to 100 years from now when yep. they're replacing things that need it. And the most marvelous teacher is when you work with old stuff, watch how the last guy did it. See how things were put together. You'll learn more than you will from, from a modern tech school. You see how they failed and the ones that, and the ones that worked and try your best to. Well, here we're working on a structure that's 150, 80 years old, all the sub church. You look at houses that are failing that were built in 1970. <laughs> for, for me, it's the fact that people put their faith in you. They give you the ability and they give you the, through a project like that, and do it the absolute best of your ability. And then they trust in you and you can, you, you can deliver them something that they're expecting. And when that whole thing comes together, that, that's the, mm -hmm. That's the project. Mm -hmm.